Welcome back to The Big Show. It's Alex Belfield in the morning, and it's always nice to get someone who's passionate and brilliant and a TV legend. Os Clark, how are you? I'm pretty good, thank you. Do you like the big build-up? Is that all right, is it? I thought it was it was short, but succinct and very punchy. Let me make notes. So what could I add to that then? Master of Wines, Down to Earth, a communicator. What would you like me to put in the intro? And we'll do it again. Um, uh, likes a glass of grog. Mm-hmm. A uh, decent bloke to spend an evening in the pub with. Often found with his nose uh, in a blue nun, things like that. Of, often found, often found at the Mojo at three in the morning when he should have been in bed <laughs> by midnight. How's your life then? Is it all about getting drunk? No, not at all. It's but it's it's about trying to have as much fun as I can while I'm doing as much work as I can. Because the, the lucky thing about my life has been that I've been able to turn my hobbies I- I- into a career. I mean, I was a, an actor to start with, then I was a singer, and now I'm a sort of a wine bloke, and I like doing telly as well. And all of these kind of things, I don't know. I'm just I feel pretty lucky, really, that um, this these things fell into my lap. It's, it, well, fell into my lap. They didn't actually fall into my lap, but they were there, and I managed to pick them up. Um, and I must admit, um, when I think, would I rather be doing something else? Well, actually, no, I wouldn't. I think I think it's fantastic. And it, it, one of the things that makes it better is that it uh, that communicating with a lot of people about something which is basically pleasure uh, is is tremendous. I'm a, I'm a, always amazed at how many wine people seem so damn serious all the time, and 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 they never seem that you never see them in the pub, and you never see them having a few glasses of wine and having a good old laugh. They've always got their noses sort of uh, in in a glass of wine, and then they're, and then they're they're sort of lips over the spit bucket. Now you know I I <laughs> when I've got to and when I'm working hard, I spit as much as the next bloke. But I also then head for the pub and say, give me something nice and local brewed. You know, a nice pint or two of some local beer or a glass or two of something really interesting, and I'd drink it. Mm. Can you help me with wine? Because here's where I'm at with wine. I love wine. I love white wine. I love red wine, depending on what I'm eating. I don't know as much about it anywhere near as you. However, I know what I like. I like a fruity red normally. That'll do me fine. I don't like a too sweet white. If there's a wine on offer half price, down to about six ninety nine. Jobs your auntie Fanny. There you go. I'm buying it. Does that make me a troglodyte, a Neanderthal man? Well, a troglodyte, uh, a Neanderthal, I would, I'd hope we can... Uh, differ about that I, I think the idea of living in a cave is actually quite attractive hmm. uh, although not with you of course I'm, no, I, no, I'd, no. I'd have to choose be uh, someone entirely different yes. uh, from you but uh, it, <laughs> it doesn't really because a lot of people um, say I like fruity reds I like fruity reds as well uh, the new world revolution has meant we've now got loads and loads of fruity reds on the market led by places, places like Australia but now I think you might find for the money Places like Chile and Argentina are doing a better job than Australia at the fruity at the fruity reds thing. I like lots of whites. I, I don't want too much sugar in them either. Well, um, I like them sharp. I like them fresh. So you've got people like New Zealand and Chile and indeed South Africa of all places producing really snappy Sauvignon Blancs nowadays, which have got loads and loads of green, sharp, fresh flavour, not sort of soft, uh, sugary styles. If you want really dry wines um, with lovely flavours, but which aren't aren't Chardonnay, which aren't Sauvignon. The new white, new wave whites coming from Italy are amazing. You know, they've all got strange names you'd never heard of. Mm. Grillo and Cataratto and Falangina and Peck. Pecorino. There's a wine called Pecorino. As in the cheese. Uh, <laughs> yes, well, I thought I thought you've, you've got the label wrong here. But Marks and Sparks, and I think it's Oddbins or maybe even Tesco, they've got wines called Pecorino. Mm. I mean, there's a new wave of Italian whites coming out. Absolutely fantastic flavours. Um, so from that point of view, I, I sort of basically agree with your, with your, with your um, kind of wine, wine drinking ideas. I think when it comes to always buying the, the wine that's on offer, though, it's not always a bad idea because frequently you'll find the wine has been artificially inflated in price and then halved. And it's not really worth the full price. It's worth the half price. Mm. So am I being con then? Is that what the game is now to try and lure me in with stuff that actually not valued at the right price in the beginning? Uh, I think that, yeah, the big supermarkets have all, all, are always having those deals on. And I think it'd be much better to say to yourself, OK, let's look at what, the, if, I, if I want to spend five quid, say, or six quid, OK, what is really at five quid and really at six quid, the proper price? Mm. And, and you can do worse, though, if you're in a supermarket than, than going to those own label type things, you know, like... Tesco's the finest and um, Sainsbury's Taste the Difference and um, Waitrose in partnership with all those kind of things because actually they're making really, really nice wines and you're not having to pay for all the advertising. If you buy a big brand and, and you know, and, and they've slashed the, the price to half price mm. 
uh, and they're advertising in all the glosses and on all the tellies and God knows where. You've got to pay for all that advertising, all that marketing. There's not going to be much money left to shove wine in the bottle. Just very finally, is wine like computers then where it gets better every year at cheaper prices? No, it's not. Wine changes every year. Sometimes it gets better. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it gets worse. Uh, and certainly with my books, I mean, especially my 250 best wines, I try to say this is the kind of stuff I'm drinking now. Trust me. Come with me. I like a drink. You'll like one too. Stick with me. Thank you very much, Os Clark, for joining us on the programme. Your new book's out now. It's called Os Clark's Pocket Wine Book 2011, and it's out now by Pavilion at 9.99. Good to talk to you. Thank you.